The Hermit, Part 3 Uh, Anon? Zip glances at Sunny. Sunny, it's obviously a painful memory for him. Don't forget, Twilight isn't here anymore. Oh, uh, right. Sunny looks up at Anon, who closes his eyes as he places his cup back on its platter. So that's what you meant when you said you lost your friends. After a moment, Anon sighs. <sighs> Not long after Tia and I got married, we learned that I had somehow become immortal. Maybe it's because I discovered how to use magic, or maybe because of how often I was exposed to eloquent spells by hanging around Celestia and Twilight every day. It... It doesn't really matter. I thought it would be great. I thought I'd get to live forever with my best friend and my wife, both of whom were also immortal thanks to being alicorns. Of course, it didn't quite turn out that way. So, what happened to them? <sighs> That's quite the long story, and one that I must confess I'm reluctant to recall. If you'd like to know, why don't you ask your new pal Discord? He was there too. Zip interjects before Sunny can. But wait, how did you know that we've met Discord? He's an old friend. We didn't get along way back when, but after everything, we learned to appreciate each other a little bit more. Lately, his encounter with you two and your friends is all he wants to talk about. Even after everything with the Unity Crystals happened? <laughs> he was right about one thing. You two really do remind me of a couple of ponies I once knew. But I digress. Uh, yes, your little band has left quite the impression on him. So, you know who we are? Uh, somewhat. You're the ponies who gathered the Unity Crystals and restored magic to Equestria, right? And I heard from the grapevine that you... Anon looks directly at Sunny. ...are an alicorn. Well... Sort of? I can use alicorn magic, but I still can't fully control it yet. My horn and wings sometimes seem like they just do whatever they want. Oh, fascinating. Not just any pony can become an alicorn, you know. You must be something really special. Oh, uh, <laughs> thank you. A light blush makes its way to Sunny's cheeks as Zip prepares to speak once more. So, you've just been living out here on your own for hundreds of years? Sort of. Uh, truth be told, I wasn't on my own for most of the time. My daughter lived here with me. Y wait you have a daughter? Yeah. I, uh, I didn't think Tia and I could have a child, but lo and behold, there she came. A beautiful, snow-white alicorn foal. Looked just like her mother, too. When everything started going down all those years ago, Tia demanded to be by Twilight's side as they did everything they could to slow the coming storm. One of us had to stay home and watch over a little girl, and, uh, that job fell on me. Tia never came home. So you took your daughter and fled to the Everfree Forest? I'd... I'd really rather not dwell on those days too much. I lost a lot of friends in the chaos, but what could I do? My little girl was just an infant. Without me to protect her, there was no telling what would have happened. I did what any father would do and risked everything just to keep her safe. The result was essentially our exile to this forest. Did you ever try to go back? <laughs> it was pretty plain to see that we had lost, Miss Zip. A few months later, I was able to confirm that we had lost everything. They... They never even found Tia's body. I'm... I'm so sorry. Anon wipes a single tear from his cheek as he continues his story. So, it was just me and my little girl here for hundreds of years. I did my best to raise her on my own, but, well, I'm just one guy. Heck, I'm not even a pony. Her early years were not easy on me. Eventually, though, she grew up. Most teenagers get all rebellious towards their old man, and she was no exception. Imagine being stuck living with your dad for hundreds of years. It was no surprise when she packed her things and said she was leaving. Wait, she left? Where'd she go? Everywhere. She went to Zephyr Heights for a few years before making her way to Bridalwood. Eventually, she settled down in Maritime Bay. 
Thankfully, she didn't resent me so much as to avoid sending me letters. Sunny interrupts an on story. Wait, hold on. If she was an alicorn, then the ponies in all of those places would have noticed. Plus, who's delivering mail for her all the way out here? For the first question, we learned that when she was a few years old, that she could shapeshift. Not unlike a changeling. It's not hard for her to turn into a unicorn, pegasus, or earth pony to blend in. Heck, when she was younger, she liked to shapeshift into a human to try and be more like her old man. <laughs> what a time that was. Now, as for the second question, an old dragon friend of mine taught me a spell to send mail magically to some pony, you know. Naturally, I made sure she knew it before she left home. And she's in Maritime Bay? Like, now? Anon is quiet for a few seconds before he sighs once again. That, I'm not sure. Last I heard from her, she had found a stallion there she fancied. It's hard for a father to hear that, but I couldn't exactly go visit her either. I mean, the pony kinds hadn't figured out how to stop being afraid of each other yet. Imagine their response to a human showing up at their doorstep. Zip chuckles. I imagine Sheriff Hitch would have had a few new laws ready to go within minutes. <laughs> well, regardless, that stallion was all she talked about. Then, without warning, the letters just stopped coming. Sunny responds, her voice inquisitive and filled with concern. Did something happen to her? I don't know. I don't want to assume the worst, but I also can't think of a good reason why she would just drop all contact with me like that. And that was a little over 20 years ago. Well, we reunited the pony kinds already, and the sheriff in Maritime Bay is my friend. If you'd like to come look for her, we'd be happy to give you a tour. Anon goes quiet again before he lets out a warm chuckle. Thank you, Sonny. I might just take you up on that. Sonny gives an honest smile as she places her teacup back on his platter, causing Zip to do the same with hers. Thank you for the tea, Mr. Anon. It was delicious. It's an older variety that I've been saving for a while. Tia's servants back at Canterlock Castle taught me how to make that. Plus, it's more than just delicious. What do you mean? Well, you tell me. How does your leg feel? Sunny looks down at her sprained leg, realizing that the swelling is gone. In fact, it doesn't even appear injured at all. As she notices this, she also realizes that her headache had gone away during their conversation. She looks at Zip in surprise, who lifts her wing and reveals that her new wound had completely healed over. Zip vocalizes her surprise. Whoa, what? What kind of tea is that again? Just an old herbal blend of some local flora. I wouldn't recommend trying that at home, though. The Everfree Forest is really dangerous when you don't know how to navigate it. Sunny speaks up yet again, her increased volume indicating that she just remembered something important. Oh, speaking of, how did you use magic back there? I thought we were outside of the range of the Unity Crystals. Now that's where you're mistaken. The crystals have no range. The problem is the Everfree Forest. Equestrian magic hadn't worked here ever since Twilight made those crystals, and that applies to your little lantern, too. If you just go around the forest, you should be fine. But that still doesn't explain how you used magic. My magic isn't equestrian in nature. I'm a human, after all. I'm basically... Well, I guess I'm literally an alien. I'm built different, you might say. Th then you can help us get home. Sure can. Hand me that lantern, will you? Zip hands the now rainbowless lantern over to Anon, who closes his eyes and seems to focus as he makes a strange gesture with his hands. After a few moments, a rainbow slowly fills the lantern, and about a minute later, it's as bright as when they left the bright house. There you go. I've pumped it with enough of my magic to last you a couple of hours. That should be more than enough time to get away from the Everfree Forest. Thank you, Anon. You're a lifesaver. Well, it wouldn't do to have two of Equestria's saviors meet an untimely end in the middle of a scary forest, now would it? Speaking of, would you look at that time? Rather than looking at any sort of clock, Anon looks out of a nearby window. Outside, sunlight is starting to peek through the trees and the sound of rain has been replaced by the occasional stray droplet of water hitting the roof. Looks like it's time for you two to get back to where you were going. Sunny and Zip look at each other and smile, 
Zip breaks the silence between them first. Well, if we know that the Unity Crystals work everywhere but here, I don't see any reason to not head back home. Agreed. Besides, I think I'd like to get back to my bed after the day we've had. Anon stands up, courteously making it seem less awkward when Sunny and Zip did the same. He returns the tea set to the kitchen counter, before escorting the mares to the door. Sure enough, the rain has completely stopped, and the damp morning air is crisp and refreshing. The trio make their way through the trees and back to the clearing, where the mare stream lies in wait. Zip climbs inside and places a lantern back where it belongs. The sound of technology coming to life fills the space as the mare stream revs up, indicating that it's ready to go. Sunny looks back at Anon, who doesn't stray too far from the tree line. Do you want to come back with us? We can help you look for your daughter if you'd like. Anon smiles back at her, raising a hand as he does so. Thank you for the offer, Sonny, but I think I'll wait a little bit before heading over there. I have some stuff I need to take care of first. Besides, I think I have a pretty good idea of where she is after our little conversation. You have a safe trip home, okay? Alright. Thank you again, Mr. Anon. I hope you'll come see us soon. You can bet on it. Anon looks to the mare stream and gives Zip a wave. She happily returns the gesture as Sunny climbs inside next to her and takes a seat. The mare stream makes another revving noise as it slowly lifts into the sky. After clearing the tree line, it turns back in the direction that it came from and flies away at a comfortable speed. Anon smiles to himself as he turns away from the clearing and returns to his cabin. Anon quietly removes his cloak and makes his way up the stairs and onto the loft. Taking a seat on the side of the bed, he reaches over to a nearby nightstand, retrieving a framed photograph resting on top of it. The photo depicts three figures, each smiling at the camera. On the right, a scarless Anon wraps an arm around the mare to the left, a snow-white alicorn with a flowing, multicolored mane. Between them, an alicorn filly with a white coat and pink mane beams at the camera with unbridled joy. Tears begin to fall from Anon's cheeks as his voice fills the silent cabin. Well, I suppose I know where you are now. I hope the two of you are having a nice time together, wherever that may be. Anon strokes a finger along the side of the frame as he smiles to himself. Oh, Tia. I wish you could be here right now. Picture in hand, he walks over to a nearby window, staring out in the direction that Sunny and Zip went. You always wanted a granddaughter, didn't you? Don't worry. I'll let her know soon enough. I mean, someone has to teach that girl how to control her alicorn magic, right? Anon places the picture back onto the nightstand and heads downstairs. He has been around for longer than he probably should. In that time, the world has changed and taken almost everything he cares about for him in the process. And yet, although he had lost so much, the future has never looked brighter. That story was freaking solid. Everything blended in so well. It, ah, it was just so nice. Anywho, let's get on to our proud donators. Top donators, Jesse Smith, Zog630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Saru Ryan, and Calidus. Madfec, Jock, Raiden, Runescythe, Will, Twinkie, Luigi, Chancer Crust, Big Smoke, Murder Princess, Little Mighty, Solar Symphony, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and love life to the fullest.